Well, welcome back to the channel. I have been absolutely stacked out of work. Ever since the lockdown was lifted for fishing, I've been out virtually every day, sh shooting videos, filming things, new products, all that kind of stuff, um, ready for a really busy sort of July, August sort of time. However, I have been getting a few matches in, um, just local, I've been staying local, I've been in like Shearsby Valley, Makings, places like that, they're local to my house, um, and I've been having some great fishing as well. Now one little job I've got today is to tie some pole rigs and I wanted to show you this little beauty, the RigMate Pro. Now I got this from Jordan Holloway who actually makes these with his, along with his dad. It's an absolutely brilliant product and I just wanted to show you how simple the process is of making rigs with a RigMate Pro. The beauty of this product is that it allows you to really be precise with your pole rigs. So, you know, when you're making up lots of pole rigs and you want duplicates and you want to know that everyone is bang on the same, this little gadget allows you to do that. Because of the measurements on this, it allows you to position your shots perfectly so that every rig you take off the winder is the same. If that's how you want to do it, then this is absolutely perfect. I've been really impressed with it, and I thought I'd just show you a little step-by-step -step guide of how I go about making pole rigs using the RigMate Pro. So here we are, we're at my little rig making bench slash desk, whatever you want to call it. Now when I first thought about the idea of doing this, I underestimated how tricky it might be. <laughs> I've tried a lot of ways to get the tripod above me, so please apologise for this little leg here that's uh, in the shop, but it's the only way I can get the camera above my head so you can actually see what's going on. Um, my scalp may also come into shot, who knows? Um, top of my head might come into shot, but we're just going to have to grin and bear it because it's the only way I can get the camera above me to take a nice shot of the RigMate Pro in action. So. Anyway, as you can see, that's enough of me waffling on. As you can see, it's a nice board. It's got markings all the way along it. It's got a spool holder, which you can take off, put your new spool line on it. I use 020 AccuPower for pretty much all of my rig lines now. Um, nice, strong material that just does not let me down. Um, so that stays on there pretty much all the time. If I was fishing for F1s and stuff, maybe I'd use 016. And if I was fishing for roach, I'd probably use 012 or 014. But because I'm predominantly doing carp fishing at the minute, um, the 020 is fine. Um, I've got my shot here, all ready to go. Uh, obviously, they come in these, these uh, small containers, but for the sake of this, I put them in these little tubs that are labelled. That comes like that. So all I need to do, if I need number nine, I can just screw that off. So everything's in one place so I can use it nice and easy. Um, I've obviously got some silicon for my floats, uh, a nice little mixed tub of silicon there. I've got some scissors, I've got a few other floats. Now one tip, um, I'm gonna retie these rigs later. Um, I'm actually, the rig I'm gonna tie for you guys is a diamond, a 4x14 diamond. But um, one little tip that I've done for years and years and years, and it still amazes me how few people do it, is when you come to retie rigs that you've already used, leave a bit of line on, I don't know if you can see, pick that out, but leave some line on your rigs, just a, you know, just a few inches above it. And then when it comes to retying your next rig, all you need to do is do a simple granny knot with your new bit of line onto this and slide the float on. And it just it just saves you all that hassle of threading the float, the line through the float and through the rubbers again. Nice little tip that, and one you know, surprised me how few people actually know about that. But yeah, so granny knot your new line onto that and pull the halt, the float, the rubbers and everything onto it. So that. That's a nice little tip there, a nice little time-saving tip. Um, other little essentials, obviously I've got some shot pliers. I used to use my teeth, but I'm not going to lie, bottom of my teeth are knackered now, so I would try and use some pliers where I can. I've got a little loop tire, and I've got my winder for my rig. Like I say, I'm going to use a, a diamond float today, a 4x14, which, as you can see, we've got a nice little float conversion chart here. It's a 0.4 of a gram, is a 4x14. Um, and I even got, look, a little shot conversion chart here, so it tells me roughly what... I need to put on. I don't bother with a shot and tube actually. Um, it's just something I've never really fussed with. If you do want to use a shot and tube, you know, get it dead right here uh, before you go fishing, then that's fine. Um, I just don't. I get it roughly to where I want to be and then I fine tune it on the bank. Uh, that's just how I've always done it. Um, for a 4x14, I like number 9 droppers, which are 0.05. Um, I'm going to use two droppers in this case, so that takes me to point 0.1. And then I'm going to use number nines for my bulk as well. So I'm looking at a total of like eight number nines total to shot this float perfectly. Uh, two number nines in my droppers, and then a six number nine bulk. Uh, it's something I picked up from Dead Ship, this, but it's something I've also done for a number of years without even really thinking about it, is having the correct amount of uh, shot in the bulk. 
Um, five to six is about right. Um, if you use a shorter one, it can spin up when you're shipping out and get cause tangles. So give yourself a bit of, um, you know, give get plenty of shot in your little bulk and use the right size shot. If I was in a four by 16, I'd use number eight droppers and I'd probably use number eight uh, from a bulk shot. Likewise, if I were using a four by 12, I'd probably use 10 droppers and a 10 as my bulk. So just something there to bear in mind. Right, let's crack on. Right, the first step, I need to get my rubbers out. So I always put three on. I always use, I usually put a longer one. I have these pre-cut ready to go. I use a longer one and then two short ones. That's just how I've always done it. You see there, I hope you can see this. Um, like I say, it's been a bit of a faff. Right, the first job is to get my float on the main line. So you've got this little tightening knob here and when you're actually working with the rig, I tighten it up, but in the, just to get started, loosen it off ever so slightly, pull off a bit of bit, an amount of line, stick it around that pin. That just centralizes everything and let's get the float on. This is actually an inline float, as well as it's got the Duracide eye and it's got a little inline body as well. So give yourself a nice clean end to work with on your main line. I, I, I often cut my line with my teeth, but to get it through these little rubbers, you do want a nice clean end. So thread that through there. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Do apologize in advance. Then we three rubbers on. Three rubbers, a little bit fiddly, but as soon as you get into it, you're away. And I'll get your rubbers on. I just need a bit more line. So as you can see, I'm always using this just to get a bit more line off and then tension it back up again. So easy, it's so much easier to work with a bit of tension. Now a little trick to get your rubbers on your float a bit easier, a bit of moisture. First rubber on. Second rubber on. And then finally, the last rubber is twice as long as the others. And there we go. So I've got one about, I don't know, 10 mil below the actual body of the float. I've got one at halfway, and then I've got a longer one that overlaps the bottom of the stem. That little bit there just stops any tangles. If you were to have it a real short, nasty piece, is it a sharp edge on the bottom of the stem, which could cause tangles. It's not always gonna, but it's good practice to leave that one a bit longer. So whenever you're moving floats online, this is a brilliant smooth line anyway, but whenever you are moving floats online, just wet it first and it'll slide much easier. Just do it nice and slow and it won't burn your line at all. Right, next job, we're gonna tie a little loop from a hook length. I always use hook lengths for my general sort of pole fishing. So a nice little loop tire, spin it around a couple of times. Again, always moisten your knots. And there we go, nice little loop. And then in the interest of consistency, trim it off with my little scissors there. Right, so that's it. I've got my line, my float on my line and I've got my hook length loop tied. Now what I need to do now is bring it down to this pin here. So what I like to do, I just pin that in there and then release some line with the pin, pop it in there and then tighten her up. And there we go. This is where the RigMate Pro really comes into its own. So now I've got my line, I'm ready to shot it up. So moisten my float and I'm gonna move it up. This is gonna be a, you know, it's a four by 14 rig. So I'm gonna be using this in sort of four foot or more of water. Right, so we've already worked out earlier that we're going to need roughly eight number nines. I may have to put some trimming shot and uh, you know get fine tune it on the bank, but eight number nines is going to be a good starting point. Now I like to go a bulk and two, so I'm going to put my first number nine here right on the knot, then I'm going to put one here. I like a nice bit of fall. If I'm fishing on the bottom I still like a bit of fall, so I'm going to put one here, then I'm going to put one 15 centimeters above that, and then I'm gonna put my bulk at 30 centimeters. So it's a nice, even shotting pattern. So let's get on and do that. Let's say I'm gonna use number nines. I'm gonna use shot pliers. I think you get a, nice, uh, a better product, a better, you know, an even press. Right, so I'm gonna put my first shot on here, right on the top of the hook length. Got my little pliers there. Pop that on, move it into position. 
So that's one on. So the next one is 50, uh, 15 centimetres above that, which I think is about right for this sort of float. Fishing on the bottom. I'm gonna, I could be using this with meat. I could be using it with hard pellets, corn, that kind of thing. So I've got number nine on the hook length loop. I've got a number nine 15 centimetres above that. And then at 30 centimetres, I'm going to put six number nines as my bulk. Now I like to have my bulk shot roughly a mil apart. Try and get the slit of the shot um, sort of in line if you can. Um, probably like a mil apart, I suppose. Just makes for a neater bulk. Um, whether it makes a difference, I don't know, but it looks better. So I'm just lining them up. Like I say, about a mil apart. Of course, you can use strung bulks and all that business, but for this, bulk and two, just to keep things simple, is like my preferred shotting pattern when I'm fishing on the bottom these days. I've tried all different things, but a lot to be said for just getting it down there and, and fishing. And the bulk and two just works. So there we go. So that's it. So now, as you can see, this is where the, you know this really comes into its own. I've got my shotting pattern here that I know it's reliable. I use it all the time. And every time I need to make a duplicate of this rig or retie this one, and I've had a good session, I know that my rig's in proportion every single time. I can put my shots in this position. Better still, if I was using strung out rigs, you know, um, like a Chianti float, like I've got here, where I use a lot for like roach fishing. Um, and I know for a fact that a shot every 10 centimetres is about right. I can do that with this and get it absolutely perfect. There's no guesswork. I've got my shot, perfect intervals all the way up the rig. It's just a great point of reference. It may take me a fraction longer to do my rigs like this, but I know that each and every one's the same. Right, so let's just screw that lid back on there. That's my shot done with for now. All that, all that I need to do now is put the rig on the winder. So I'm just going to take that off there, just pull that pin out. And then I'm going to, I'm going to peel off roughly five foot of line. It's not an exact science this, but I'll pull that bit of line off, trim it off like you do. Tie a nice big loop in it. I'm probably not going to use this, this loop. I do like a figure of eight. And that's it. So the rig's there. Let's just stick it on the winder. I always put it to one side on the winder just because obviously I'm going to try and get two floats on here. Two of the same duplicates. Now this rig is ready to rock and roll. Now if I'm going makings or Shearsby, wherever I'm going to be going next, that's a great float for sort of like a five meter line, maybe fishing hard pellets on the bottom. Absolutely perfect, nice two mil bristle that I can see. I could dot it down if I wanted to or I can leave a bit of show on the float and, uh, and read that bristle when I need to. So there you go, that's the rig done. I hope that's a nice little demo of the RigMate Pro and how easy and, and, and convenient it makes rig tying. Um, it's actually a joy to use this thing. I hope the uh, over-the-head camera wasn't too distracting, um, but I hope you've got a nice few little tips there on rig tying. Um, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Comment below as well if you found this useful. I'm going to try to do a few more uh, sort of this type of bits while I'm doing rigs and stuff because I'm mad keen from fishing at the minute, so I'm doing lots of prep, lots of little ideas are getting all my hook lamps are getting filled up. So uh, we're going to be doing all that sort of stuff soon. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you soon.